April 15th, 2015. That's the day that we started this build. And since then, we've done a lot. We've stripped it down and cleaned it up, painted up the engine bay. We built a new engine with forged internals, rebuilt the transmission and dropped it in. But it's taken a year and a half. Not because we haven't spent so much time on it, but because we haven't had much time for it. Let's finish this. So remember that list of things that I had that was left to do with the car? Well, this paper's already getting like really dirty and I'm losing it. So I'm gonna write them down on this tape and I'm gonna put it on the windshield. Now we all have everything visually and then when I'm done with something, just rip it off. So it's a real visual way of me feeling like I'm actually accomplishing something with this build because it's not really going anywhere. All right, that's the last one. There we go. As I assembled things onto the car, it became more and more satisfying to rip things off of the to-do list. And with the radiator and bumper support done, it was time for the headlights. So this is the headlight assembly. Uh, this is obviously the two headlights. These are the old headlights that I was running before. They are projector headlights. Um, they're pretty nice, um, <clears throat> you know, for, for an Escort. Um, but the uh, panel right here won't fit. Uh, so you'll notice that uh, it's clearly not gonna fit because it hits this radiator right here, um, which is not normally supposed to be there. So um, what I have to do basically is just cut it off. I'm just gonna cut off the middle section of this and the headlights will still bolt up. There's a bolt there and there's another bolt underneath here. You know, they'll still connect up uh, to the body just fine, um, but I won't have this middle panel. So let's go ahead and cut that out right now. This is the intercooler that I want to run on the car. This is a precision intercooler. It's got uh, 2.75 inch end tanks on it. It's really nice. It's really sturdy. Um, I really want this one. However, this build is taking forever. And because I don't want to take it forever in a year, I'm going to put the original intercooler back onto it. Now this is the eBay intercooler. Uh, this is the intercooler that I was running before. I think it's like CX Racing or something like that. Uh, and, and it worked, it did the job well, uh, it didn't leak anywhere, uh, kept my temperatures cooled. Now whether that's gonna happen when I turn the boost up or not is another question, but um, for now, for the sake of time, we're gonna put this one back in since it already fits. But we're gonna do a small improvement to uh, enhance the cooling capabilities of it since we are running more boost. We're gonna put this on the intercooler pipes. Um, since the pipes are running throughout the engine bay, typically the air temperatures warm up as the air goes through the engine bay. Now, what this does is you put this on the intercooler pipes and it reflects the heat off of it. Uh, it sounds like a gimmick, but it actually does work. Uh, I've watched plenty of videos on YouTube of other people showing intake temperatures with and without it, and uh, it does work. So I'm gonna put this on the intercooler pipes, plus blue and gold looks great. So let's go ahead and do it. All right, so this part's a little boring, so I'm gonna speed this up. Uh, I had started to wire the headlights, engine, and well, everything. I had to wait on a few more parts that were coming in the mail, so wiring was the last thing that I could do, and I had been putting it off. But after a few days of wiring, it was time for me to pick up my friend from the airport. So I just flew a guy in from Colorado, and he's gonna come help tune the car. Uh, now, obviously the car is not ready to be tuned yet. Um, I planned on being a lot further along than I am right now, but um, he's gonna be here for five days. So we're gonna kind of work on the car for the next couple of days together, and then we're gonna tune it, and hopefully we'll have enough time to get to the actual tuning part. I don't know, time is limited, but I'm really hoping to get it done this week.
cause it's hard for my soul So this is Jeff, Jeff from Hardline Motorsports. Uh, flew him in from Colorado, and he is gonna be doing the tuning on this thing, but uh, I'm not actually ready to tune it yet, obviously. It still has some more work to be done. Um, so Jeff is gonna help out with some wrenching. He didn't know he was uh, signing up for that, but. <laughs> well, I kind of figured, which is why I brought my grubbiest clothes I could bring. <laughs> Jeff and I immediately went part shopping, and today we're hunting for a radiator hose. It's not as easy as saying that I need a 98 Ford Escort radiator hose. I'm using an aftermarket radiator from who knows what and putting it in a different spot than normal. So Jeff and I had to find just the right size of bends from one of those hoses to fit. So that hose we got was $14, and it was so long that we could cut it and it fit the upper radiator, and it looks like it's going to fit the lower radiator if, uh, Jeff doesn't stop doing sexual advances on my car, then we'll see if it actually works. I'm sorry, I can't help myself. It's just that tight. Do like Jeff and always wear safety glasses and gloves when using die grinders. That's right. So I'm adjusting the clutch pedal because there's a ton of slop in the clutch pedal. I'm hoping just by adjusting it will work, but if not, then that means I have a leak in the clutch system somewhere because um, the clutch wouldn't be engaging very well. But I'm going to adjust this and see how that does. So Jeff is over there removing the can cap and uh, so we can put the new cans in. And uh, I didn't tell you guys this, but when I was looking at the cams, I noticed um, on the very edge, the lobes of them there, you'll see that there was like some rust. Um, Looks like the rust pitted through onto the lobes of the cam, uh, and I just didn't feel safe running that. It was on uh, just three lobes there, so there's this one, this one, and that one. Um, I didn't feel safe running that, so I got some new cams. So I got those off of a guy on Facebook, actually. They're for the Ford Focus, but they're the exact same cams, basically, uh, which is nice. The lobe, uh, you know, are a little bit different. The lift is a little bit different, but uh, it has the same sensor on the end of them, so they should work out just fine. So we're gonna go ahead and put these in. So after we got the cams in, it was time for the cam gears and timing belt. That allowed us to get the engine into time. And then once we got that done, it was time for some cookies. We ate the whole batch that night. Now, the engine's in time. It's starting to look like a real engine bay. We kept pulling tape off the window as Jeff and I worked late into the night. Most of what we did were small projects here and there, not really too interesting, like, like the steering wheel. So this here is a quick release. Not really, it's just not bolted in. I couldn't tell you how many hours Jeff and I worked on this car, but we're starting to make really good progress. And we're getting closer and closer to the moment when we can turn that key for the first time. But before we can do that, we gotta have fuel. All right, so what do you, what's going on? All right, so because this car has been sitting for about two years, the fuel that's in the tank is of unknown quality. It's probably crap. So what we're gonna do is manually power up the pump so we can transfer all of the old fuel out into some sort of a catch can. In this case, it's probably just gonna be a gas can. And we got the gas out now, so we're gonna open up the tank and put the new fuel pump in. So that's it for Jeff's second day here. It's 2 a.m. and time to go to bed. But we wanted to make sure to clean up everything before tomorrow because tomorrow is gonna be a long day. So it's day three now of Jeff being here and the car is almost ready to run. I mean, there's a few things left on here that need to be done before we can crank it over. Um, but we did some things last night that we've got to take off. Uh, so we did the air filter, took that off. Uh, we did fresh new fuel. Fuel? Yep. yep. And yeah, that, that covers <laughs> that. Yeah. So Jeff, you're going to do the cam position sensor and the neutral switch, uh, and I will start on the vacuum lines and the boost controller and that sort of thing. Sound good? Cool. cool. Most of what we did during the day was pretty boring. Running vacuum lines and catch cans and figuring out how to route things and finish things off, and before you knew it, it was nighttime again. And we had gotten a lot done during the day. The list on the windshield was just about done. 
So instead of sleeping tonight, we're gonna keep working on the car and try to finish everything off. On to the last step now, filling the engine's fluids. It's finally time to give the engine its first crank. And that's really scary, because I've been working on this build since April 2015, and I've had a built block in my garage for much longer. It's scary to think about all the things that could go wrong, even if it's just one bolt that I forgot to torque down. Jeff locks in the final startup tune and gets it dialed in, and here we are, starting it for the first time. Will it start? That was just the initial prime. I plug in the coil pack now and see if it'll run on its own. 